Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. I got some big trouble for Nathan Oakley. You know, this hot air balloon isn't the only thing full of hot air. Nathan, you're pretty full of it yourself. Warning, severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out those oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range, and let's get ready to give Nathan a good old-fashioned ass whipping. That's... Neil deGrasse Tyson says, Earth will turn underneath hot air balloons and footballs and bullets. Unlike Blue Marble, the one you're disagreeing with there, Virus. <laughs> I don't understand Coriolis or the points made by Neil deGrasse Tyson, who claims a field goal was observed to curve through the goal because Earth turned beneath the field goal. You know, I think we better fact check that. I don't think that's what Neil deGrasse Tyson said. Let's listen to what he did say about that field goal. Sweet. Was it the Bengals? Some, I forgot who it was about a year ago. Yeah. There was in overtime, after there was the exchange of ball, so now it's sudden death overtime, they kick a field goal from 50 yards, of course, mm -hmm. as it must be, and, well, 40 yards out plus the 10 plus the hike and distance. So it was like 52-yard field goal, and there it was. And if there's tense, right? Everybody's silent. And the ball comes up, and it careens off the left upright mm. and goes in mm. for the win. Wow. And I said, hmm. I what? remember this. That's what I'm saying. I remember this That's tweet. That's what I'm saying. So I'm there, and I'm saying, hmm, wait, wait, the angle of this, how long is it? Here? So I checked the stadium on its configuration, what's longitude and latitude, and I said, I did a quick calculation, and I tweeted, the winning field goal in that game was aided by a one-third of an inch deflection to the right from Earth's rotation. He didn't say anything about Earth rotating under the football now, did he, Nathan? You were just making that up, weren't you? He said the field goal was aided by Earth's rotation, but he didn't say how. I'll tell you what, I've got an idea, though. I've got another clip of Neil deGrasse Tyson discussing Coriolis and how it affects storm systems and weather systems. Let's listen to that because there he does explain it. I need Earth. You're gonna, uh, you, the only there one. it goes. Oh, I look at that. <laughs> any planet you want is yeah, here. Any of the eight planets, get over it. Okay. So uh, we all know Earth rotates. Right. And on the equator, they actually rotate faster than anybody else. Their makes, speed through space is makes, faster. Makes sense. Because they make a day's trip uh, like everybody else does, but they've gone 25,000 miles. Okay. And anyone else has gone less. Less. All right. That's fact number one. Fact number two, let's throw a low pressure system in the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. And you're a puffy cloud. Which mm -hmm. way are you going to go? You're going to push me north. North. Yeah. So all the system will push you north mm -hmm. towards that low pressure system. All right. And, I'm an, and another puffy cloud north of the the low pressure system, which way are you gonna go? I'm gonna go south. You're gonna go south. So the low pressure system attracts all clouds. Right, oh wow. Calling all clouds, so there they go. Now, that if that kept up, they would just sort of meet in the middle. Right. But that, that's hey, not what up? happens. How that's you that, doing? That's not what happens because everybody has sideways motion. Right. And I'm a cloud south of that low pressure system, and I go towards it, but wait a minute, I have speed that will overtake it. Right. Because I'm going sideways faster than it is. Okay. It'll overtake it to the right. Right. Now you're above and you're headed towards it. You're going to fall behind it to the right. Oh. And that creates a circul a general circulation of all weather around a low pressure system. And that's what we call a storm. And so, Chuck, it probably makes sense that if you repeat this in the southern hemisphere, everything is going to move in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So storms in the southern hemisphere actually rotate clockwise. And that would mean a storm on the equator wouldn't know which way to rotate. This is from Harvard, by the way. So actually it was conservation of angular momentum that Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about. Exactly what you've been told about a thousand times now, Nathan. It has nothing to do with the earth rotating under the football. The ball is simply conserving the angular momentum it had when it left the surface of the earth. If it is south and traveling north, it will deflect to the east. If it is north and traveling south, it will deflect to the west in the northern hemisphere. And that's all reversed in the southern hemisphere. So clearly, you are simply trying to misrepresent what Neil deGrasse Tyson said, and you're misrepresenting what I said too, but we'll get to that in a minute. And Blue Marble, who says Earth will not turn beneath a hot air balloon. Even though if you example Coriolis on a roundabout, 
it will turn beneath both a ball and a balloon. But when we transpose that onto Earth, suddenly we have contrasting positions from NDT and Blue Marble. NDT says Earth does turn under the ball, like on a roundabout with a bull balloon and a ball. <laughs> Cut the planetary rotation. Does that, oh, not, oh, yeah, does yeah, that not engage with a field kick? So if you have a north-south stadium, and many are, if it's oriented that way, and the kicker kicks the ball, depending on how high and how long it's in the air, the rotation of the Earth can have a significant effect oh. on its trajectory towards the goalpost. If you're trying to make a 50-yard field goal, that's far away enough. And the ball is airborne long enough for the rotation of the Earth to deflect it to the right. Deflect it to the right. Deflect it to the right. Because everybody has sideways motion. Right. And I'm a cloud south of that low pressure system, and I go towards it, but wait a minute, I have speed that will overtake it. Right. Because I'm going sideways faster than it is. Okay. It'll overtake it to the right. Right. Neil deGrasse Tyson never said the earth rotated under the football. In fact, exactly what he said was, today's Bengals winning overtime field goal was likely enabled by a one-third inch deflection to the right caused by earth's rotation. A deflection to the right, that is the conservation of angular momentum. So what Nathan's doing is just making a straw man. We can easily confirm what Neil deGrasse Tyson came up with. It works like this. At the 40 yard line, the earth has a tangential speed, but at the goal line, that tangential speed is a little bit less. Now, if you do the math and Nathan, I'm quite sure you can't do it. So I'll do it for you. If you take the difference in the tangential speed between the goal post and the 40 yard line times about a three second flight time for the ball, you get a deflection of three-eighths of an inch. It is that conservation of angular momentum that allowed the football to pass between the uprights. You're misrepresenting what Neil deGrasse Tyson said, and you're trying to contrast it against a remark I made having nothing to do with a projectile, unless you think a hot air balloon is a projectile. But Blue Marble says no. The balloon moves with the roundabout. No deflection to see. That's not what I said. I said exactly the opposite. Did you really think you're going to get away with this one? But we're not on a roundabout, are we, Nathan? And the atmosphere above the roundabout's not rotating with the roundabout like it rotates with the Earth. Is it, Nathan? So what you just said actually is one of these guys, isn't it, Nathan? Where are pendulums deviation the strongest? So who, who claimed pendulums? I don't remember detailing pendulums. I remember detailing Coriolis. Earth turning beneath a ball, according to NDT. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. And Earth not turning beneath a balloon, according to Blue Marble. Nothing to do with pendulums. Do you understand how I'm attacking your argument? You're not. You just keep telling me I don't understand Coriolis or their positions, which I've summarized about 50 times. And you've gotten it wrong all 50 times, Nathan. It is one non-inertial reference frame. That's where Coriolis takes place. Not two reference frames, one reference frame. I'm, base, I'm basically getting people to understand that you, you don't understand virus. Coriolis because you can't... Yeah, yeah, we know. You're getting people to think I don't understand Coriolis by saying it over and over again, but not giving any examples or summarising it. And every time you claim I don't understand it, I say Coriolis is a not actual deflection observed from a non-inertial turning reference frame beneath an inertial reference frame to observe not actual deflection in a projectile which potentially travels in a straight line but appears to curve because you turn beneath it. That is Coriolis effect. And every time you try and allude to my audience that I don't understand this stuff by baseless assertion and ad hominem, I'll just detail it concisely. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Blue Marble called me an idiot because I didn't understand how Earth and atmosphere move together as one reference frame. He didn't seem to understand Blue Marble, that is. That he's contradicting Blue Marble is contradicting Neil deGrasse Tyson, who claims there's two reference frames to see drift in a football. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. He says, Nathan, you're an idiot. Obviously, we're not going to see the balloon drift away. The atmosphere's moving with the balloon. Really, Blue Marble? 
So the atmosphere's moving with the football, Neil deGrasse Tyson said, drifted in a second reference frame, you complete clown. So I'm not saying anything any differently than what Neil deGrasse Tyson is saying. But let's see what you're saying, Nathan. You don't know what a frame of reference is, but you're really damn sure that Coriolis requires two of them. You think the Earth rotates under projectiles like footballs at 15 degrees per hour, so they just ignore conservation of angular momentum. You don't understand that hot air balloons are just simply moving with the atmosphere and the winds. For some reason, you think the Earth needs to turn underneath them, and you believe a balloon above a roundabout is somehow analogous to the Earth despite the lack of any substantial gravity or a rotating atmosphere attached to the roundabout. Does that pretty well sum it up? You know, Nathan, there's a reason I called you an idiot. It's because... You're an idiot! <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And Nathan, when I say how stupid can you be, that isn't a challenge. That's a question. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Shout out to the patrons and PayPals. And we'll be back pretty soon kicking Nathan's ass again, I'm sure.